Hello and welcome to The Relevance of Now. My name is Michael Connell. I'll be your host. And I'm here with William Linville. Hey, Will. Hey, Mike. How's it going? Are you having a lot of fun? Yes, I am. Thank you. Wonderful day. A client of yours requested us to speak about the difference between judgment and discernment. And to start off, how would you define judgment? Judgment is when you command something so. Like when I say, Mike, I love your shirt. It reminds me of a couch cover. <laughs> or a body like yours, you know, who wants to live? And things like that. Those would be judgments. Today is brilliant or pretty, whatever, whatever. That would be more of a discerning because you're looking outside of yourself observing and taking in all the elements that are occurring around you, which comes more into observation of the elements. Now, when we start to say, this day stinks, or this day is great, or da, blah, 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 this is where we start projecting your consciousness into putting it in a box. All judgment has boxes. Discernment has openness, awareness, and clarity. I may observe that my car is running low on fuel. Okay, so I observe that, and as an action, I may stop and go to the petroleum station, get some gas, and go on with my day. That would be observing and awareness and clarity coming from your presence as you are right here, right now, wide awake, fully alert. As we can see things for what they are, as we can see things for how they are, and then behaving appropriately, if you will. Now, if I see that my car vehicle is running low on fuel, if I say, oh, this darn car, and I never, blah, 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 blah. This is where we start to internalize it and go into judgment of internalization of something's wrong with the car, something's wrong with yourself, something's this, something's that. and. All of these colorful attributes that start creating all these boxes and anxiety, panic, all sorts of adrenaline running through your physical embodiment. And it gets stopped right there, stuck right there. And then it builds and builds and grows and grows. And that part is based once again in judgment. We go back to discernment. Okay, this body looks or feels like X, Y, and Z. We're not saying it, it is X, Y, and Z. It's a feeling it for what it is, how it is. For some, you may find things to be beautiful. Great. For some, you might find it to be uncomfortable. Beauty you can feel because you observe, you acknowledge, and either your body speeds up vibratorily, you can breathe deeper, you can feel the flesh expanding, and you're self-expanding through the flesh. Or we can go back and say, well, this equals da 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 da, which equals da 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 da, which equals I'm a this, this is that, blah, 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 which is creating all these sticky boxes again, rather than seeing things honestly, truly, for what they are, how they are, and being able to act accordingly in a state of fluidity. You're not freezing up, you're not pushing. It's a state of calm, a state of calm, peace, harmoniousness, knowingness. It's like a symphony of sequences of events that continue to arise and arise and grow and grow and emanate and arise with so much more ease, vitality, and grace. And one step after another step, you feel more lively. You're not going into battle mode, like you against the world or the world against you. No, we go into a state of having no filters, where it puts us in a state of expanding, seeing everything for what it is without any loaded pockets of like buildup of combustion from the ego. You mentioned discernment's a lot about feeling, and it seemed like judgment's a lot about thinking. Totally. 
And so is the feeling coming from our innate true self? Yes. And the thinking, that's where we get into past, present, future. You're seeing something. You're deciding as creator incarnate that this equals this, that, and the other. This is black, it's white, it's green, it's purple, blah, blah, blah. And based on your past experiences, you're deciding if it's safe, if it's dangerous, if it's pleasing, if it's not pleasing. And that's all through the filters of where the ego has been created. Now you're seeing the world through different glasses, through these decisions that were made about X, Y, Z, like going in the street is dangerous. No, well, it's not dangerous. You may want to stop, take a breath, look around, observe the environment, become present. Then taking your body across the street, rather than thinking and going into what I would call a frozen mode, like being paralyzed by fear. Or you wonder, when there's a house fire, why do dear ones perish so frequently? The truth is that they get caught up in the ego. They go into fear mode where fear takes out all rationality and you go into panic and they run into circles, run into circles when before the fire, they knew how to walk out the front door. They knew how to get out a window. They knew how to spray water, get in the bathtub, shower, whatever it, whatever it called for in that moment. And then the fire hits, the ego kicks up, same with the adrenaline, and it leaves you really in no man's land. Because then you're going here, you're going there, you're thinking you're this, you're that, and yeah, and just total reaction mode. Now, if we go back to the fire with you in a state of discernment, your discernment doesn't have filters. The ego has filters, the mind has bought into the filters that have let this equal that, that equal that from the psyche and the sub-psyche and the emotional calibration lattice work. But then we get back into feeling for a moment, back into discerning, okay, there's a fire over there and I have this whole other part of the home that I can walk out of. Where there is no adrenaline, there is no fight and flight. You're not being ran in circles, ran in circles, and having your body leave the planet. You take a breath. <sighs> now, all of a sudden, your clarity, your knowingness, even literally a pathway opens up for you to get out a window, go through a door, whatever it may be for you. Right there, you're clear. Right there, you have total clarity, rationale. But you see, you're not running around, scrambling this, that, and the other, running around, bumping your head on walls. And you're not going into victim, victimizer mode. We're not going into battle mode. William, I always think this topic is fascinating from distinguishing thinking and feeling. Thinking is the judgment, which you mentioned about past, present, future. And feeling is using all our senses and knowingness in the now to discern, based on feeling vibrant, what direction we can go. For example, if we're presented with we want to go volunteering, let's say. We want to volunteer at an organization and there's an abundance of options. And we might even, a friend might be trying to pull us into one or another. And, and we're, we're looking to decide on where it is we're going to share our gifts and talents. The way I grew up was judging everything. And many people the way you made a decision was based on good or bad judgment and wasn't so much based on feeling. But for many of us throughout our day, we may be mostly in the mind, mostly thinking, and then usually mostly 
uh, contemplating the past and future about decisions that we're making. We're not necessarily in the now. So how do we get back to, if we're presented with an opportunity to volunteer, for example, how do we get back to being able to discern and being able to feel? Number one, let's make a list of all of the places that you could offer your services. Now, let's bring up opportunity number one. Just put it right there in front of you. Now, let's take a deep breath through the nose, all the way down through the pelvic girdle. Hold. And now just slowly exhaling through your mouth as slow as you can. Just much like inhale for 12, hold for 12, exhale for 12. And let's just really just focus in on that opportunity. And now let's just watch how your body responds. Is it loose? Is it experiencing excitement? Is it experiencing dread? Is it tied up in a knot? Because your body's not going to tell you stories. I and mean, remember, your body is made up of the elements of the planet, but it's also a universal instrument and tool and conduit. You are the one coming in to explore the physical, explore the exponential world. I mean, you are already totally, thoroughly connected with all that is, as all that is. So now we go to option number two. Let's put a check mark by the first one, yay or nay. Let's go to the second one. Let's just take another breath. Hold. Exhale. And right now, how's your tummy? How's your solar plexus? How are your shoulders? How is the flesh on the shoulders? How's your head feeling? Ideally, there would be a certain amount of exuberance excitement, joy, for no apparent reason, except we're not tuning in what the company does or doesn't do. We're just putting the name in front of us. We're feeling with our body, how the body's responding. Because remember, the body's a kinesthetic conduit as well. So from here, your body and your higher levels, the rest of you are already projecting your consciousness through that door to say, huh, this feels pleasurable. Or, huh, this feels chaotic. Or, huh, wow, this feels really tight. And did we put a check mark, yay or nay? Did we go to the next one, yay or nay? All the way down to all 12 of them. Now, let's step back, let's pick, maybe there's three, maybe there's four, maybe there's five, great. Now, let's make this statement to yourself. And I'm saying your higher levels, but... You are your higher levels, just vibrating at a different vibratory frequency in megahertz of light. So now, we just say we have five. Let's sit back down. Let's take another breath. Look at just the name, preferably not doing any research because we don't want to create any sort of cloudiness in our consciousness, nor confusion in your body about you're wanting to feel a certain way because of X, Y, and Z. Let's just put the name there. The mind, it's funny because the mind cannot make common sense out of it because now we're going beyond the mind. We're going into you as a universal conduit instrument and amplifier through the body. We'll make a statement. This one would be in my highest to best good. Remember, you're making a statement. You're making a statement to the other parts of yourself. Because each and every time we do this, you're opening up these beautiful portals. It's like going to the sun, beyond the sun, to central sun intelligence, beyond that, into your light realms, on and on. But right now we're just jumping into the chase of it. We're going right there. And now we make the statement, hmm, assisting or offering my heart, my services, abilities, whatever it may be for you, into the certain company is in my highest best good. Now, is your body relaxing, decompressing? Is it getting tied up? Is it fluctuating? If it's fluctuating, that's kind of like undecided. Kind of like you could go there. It's not great. It's not not great. Then we go to the next one. Ones you're going to feel more exuberant about, lighter, more re-energized about. And then I would say, okay, 
I'm going to circle that one. And that's going to be the one that I go to. Now, at first, it sounds complicated. It sounds like a lot of work. But it is a lot less work than going to one, switching to another, switching to another, switching to another. But before you know it, what's going to happen is you'll look at that list as a whole. One is going to start flashing right there for you. And bam, here we go. I'm giving you the process right now, technically, with trusting yourself, trusting what you're being presented with, trusting how you feel, and also reconnecting with how you you feel, not what the ego says to react to as an emotion, but where we're cutting through all the fog, all the clouds, and we're opening up all these different veils of going direct with you that become sharper, clearer. And then there's times that through this whole process, you'll be presented with a thought form. A thought form, but it's kind of like a picture. And oh, okay, great, man, bring it on, which you're going to feel even more exuberant, more re-energized, more amplified. So you would no longer be second-guessing yourself. You would be in a natural, open, divine flow of you in your natural flow without overthinking, playing guessing games. You'd be in your natural flow with the whole universe through you and you accessing, activating, embodying all of you to be in this constant orchestrated event for your most important, highest and best good and enjoyment and pleasurableness. It makes me think through a number of my experiences recently and seeing my interactions with opportunities or questions. And I can really see where if I wasn't in my presence or in the now, then my first reaction is based on judgment. And what is judgment, Mr. Michael? It's based on my past experiences or what does this mean for me? What responsibility am I going to have? And it just like, I could, I was replaying a couple of them and I was like, wow, this is really significant. And it made me realize how when something presents, uh, more and more, I need to be mindful of being in my presence when I'm with someone so that I can use my discernment and not react just based on my past perceptions. Yes, because if you explore judgment all the way to its source, it's much like anger. It's a defense mechanism to try to keep yourself safe. Right. And then from a self-image perspective based in the ego, trying to feed the ego to where the ego can perceive itself to be better than or less than. But it's still a defense mechanism to push others away and hold others at bay, including opportunities. Most definitely. And it's not giving you the ability to feel more enjoyment. Exactly. It kind of strangles the enjoyment out of you. It's like the long way. (laughs) It's going to be like constant thinking about it. And, oh, am I going to just try to make the other person happy? What about me? Or, you know, it's just, I feel pressure. You know, I know that occurs too, where someone will invite you to do something. And immediately it's like, if you're not in the now, in your presence, a lot of times for me, it would just feel like pressure. And it's kind of interesting, right? Because all of that comes back to taking no responsibility for your action, words, and deeds and having another to blame. (laughs) yikes well the relevance of now is becoming more and more clear through all these podcasts and it's very clear being able to discern can only occur through feeling and we need to be in our presence in the present in order to do that and be able to make the distinct clarity between emotion and feeling Yes. Because many get confused here. They, they perceive that feeling is emotion. No. Emotion is a lot of judgment that's been blocking up all this energy within yourself and your live stream. Feeling is more of a presence. And you've addressed that in previous podcasts where 
the word feeling in a human body can only occur when we're in our presence. We could feel emotions, but that's not feeling. No, it, it's more like experiencing emotion. Right. Uh, feeling is you're, you're in your presence and your body. It's when your hairs go up or you're feeling more vibrant. Those are the innate feelings that our true self is created as. Is that the right way to say it? What's our true self exposing ourself to ourself <laughs> through the physical mechanism? Wow. And that really has been a distinction that's made a huge difference for me. And I know that you've described that as we were created, our love and vibrance and joy and exuberance caused the body to react. And that's when you really know that you're in your discernment. Totally. And, you know, it brings up a different topic a little bit. To expand upon it, it's like those that constantly perceive that they need narcotics or drugs or alcohol or food or chocolate or sugar. You know, a lot of that comes to attempting to escape the emotions, not the feeling. They're trying to get to a point of being able to feel but not being harassed by the ego emotional states that have led them there looking for an escape in the first place. See, when you're feeling, that's one of those things where you can actually stop, feel, hear the whole ohm of the whole universe. It's like that it's so, so quiet that it's almost deafening because it's like there's no stimulation. When I, I share that part, because there's no stimulation for the ego to bite into. You start starving the ego of all of its power and hold over you of all this stuff that you perceive to be normal, societally acceptable or not. All this stuff around perceiving yourself to be of this, be of that, and the ego taking it, running with it like there's no tomorrow. And your body getting more and more tied up. But what about when we reach a certain state of feeling of embodiment? We can call it enlightenment, but if we're going to break that down, it's not about how many books you've fed to the mind. It's about lightening the load from all the old. Wow. Thank you, William, for all that clarity on judgment, discernment, and being in the relevance of now, feeling, emotion. There's a lot packed into this, and the clarity was fantastic. Thank you. And thank you, Mr. Michael. Awesome, awesome, as always. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, and thank you all for joining us. Please click subscribe to hear future episodes and future information and clarity and wisdom from William. Namaste. Namaste. Namaste.